I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Nobody wants to hear bad news. But sometimes bad news is necessary if you want to get the truth about something. Water ionizers are super popular right now and they have been for a long time. But the truth is there are some real limitations with water ionizers. And you have to know these things if you have one, sell them, or might ever have or going to sell them in the future. Are you ready? Here we go. Before we begin, I have to thank our patrons for their support. And of course, I need to remind you to always check the description of the video. There's a lot of stuff in there, including our sources and links you may want to go check out. My email is in there as well, so feel free to email me with any additional questions. Check out the description if you want to become a patron and support our mission. Also, if you're not interested in supporting us regularly through Patreon, you can also do a one-time donation, and that link will also be in the description. It is also important you watch the video we made before this one. That video discusses the history of ionized water and what the real therapeutic agent is. Watching that video will make this video make a lot more sense. This video is about the problems, or better stated, the limitations that water ionizers have to dissolve molecular hydrogen into water. Hydrogen is, of course, the reason for the health benefits of alkaline ionized water. And we go into that in depth in our last video. But before we get into those limitations, we need to say something here. The truth of the matter here is there are pros and cons to every hydrogen or hydrogen water technology. Water ionizers laid a foundation as the initial technology to bring hydrogen water to thousands of people. That should not be understated or underappreciated whatsoever. Without water ionizers, most of us would have not experienced the potential of hydrogen gas. Nevertheless, the biomedical research of hydrogen is growing, and objective truths are being more understood as to how and why we can get the most from this tiny little molecule known as molecular hydrogen. A very important point to remember is that water ionizers were designed to produce alkaline water, not to dissolve high levels of hydrogen gas into water. Here are a couple quotes. Importantly, alkaline water ionizers were developed decades before the therapeutic importance of molecular hydrogen was known. Thus, these units were optimized for alkaline pH, not high dissolved hydrogen concentration. Typically, at normal flow and with normal source water, the concentration of H2 from an alkaline water ionizer is around 0.1 ppm to 0.7 ppm. So you could say that the fact that ionizers do dissolve some hydrogen into water is a very fortunate accident. And all the more reason to jump on the ionizer train, right? Well, not exactly. We have categorized and combined the limitations of water ionizers into eight main problems that we will unpack for you right now. Number one, dependent on source water. So, water ionizers are heavily dependent on the minerals in your water to work properly. Conventional ionizers need ions to be able to perform electrolysis. This means that if a person's source water is below 70 TDS or total dissolved solids, they will have a tough time producing and dissolving H2 into the water. Here is a quote. When the tap water is the sole source of ions, minerals, the water ionizer will produce a mildly alkaline pH at the cathode and a mildly acidic pH at the anode. These figures vary depending on the machine, the pH, and ion slash mineral content in tap water. Why is this important? Most people have enough minerals in their tap water for electrolysis. However, not all source water or TDS is created equal. Also, there are plenty of situations where there is a whole home RO installed, or we have even seen citywide RO source water, or just low mineral source water in general. So it is definitely a huge hurdle to make sure source water is adequate. And trying to remineralize the water can be an extra hassle or doesn't fully get the job done as well. Number two, scaling problems. On the complete opposite side of the spectrum is having a lot of minerals in your source water, namely calcium. Ionizers are known to struggle with an effect called calcium precipitation. This is when dissolved calcium or calcium carbonates in the water come out of solution and become visible due to a high pH. This effect starts when the water reaches an 8.4 pH. This is made clear when you see white flakes in the drinking water from an ionizer. This effect is what causes scaling issues in these systems. The scaling often occurs on the electrodes in the water cell and will heavily affect the dissolved H2 concentration. Even a microscopic layer of scaling can prevent H2 from dissolving into the water properly. Water ionizers require regular cleaning for the water cell and the plumbing due to this effect. Cleaning can be as frequent as a few times a week or once a month depending on your source water conditions. Some alkaline water ionizers can produce adequate hydrogen gas levels, but due to their production of alkaline water, 
the electrodes tend to scale up quickly, which prevents the hydrogen gas from dissolving into the water. Therefore, without cleaning the system with citric acid or vinegar, the concentration of hydrogen gas can drop below 0.01 ppm in a matter of days to weeks depending on source water and usage. In fact, some water ionizers may produce very high alkaline water, but with no detectable amounts of hydrogen gas. This is also observed in many water ionizers that may produce an adequate level of hydrogen gas when the electrodes and hoses are clean. But after calcium builds up within the machine, the level of hydrogen gas can fall below the detection limit. This may take a few days to weeks or months depending on the source water and usage. Now some newer ionizers have built into their design anti-scaling technology. This is where their cathode and anode switch polarities with each use, which will repel the calcium scaling and keep the plates clean. This is an improvement from the original design, but it isn't perfect. The calcium still has the potential to precipitate and can coat the tubing after the water cell. This can affect the H2 concentration as well as slow down the flow rate drastically. On top of that, white flakes in your drinking water really isn't that appealing to many people. Number three, dissolving issues. Since hydrogen gas is a therapeutic agent of ionized water, it is crucial to dissolve the gas into the water so we can reap the benefits. We talked about the importance of dissolved hydrogen gas and undissolved hydrogen gas in this video. Check it out. Water ionizers have no technology to help hydrogen gas dissolve into the water. Keep in mind, hydrogen gas has a low water solubility as compared to other dissolved gases, meaning hydrogen gas does not want to dissolve into the water. We have to make it get up in there. For example, carbon dioxide, the same gas that's in soda, is 43 times more soluble in water than hydrogen gas when you compare their mass or moles. And it's 926 times more soluble when comparing their dissolved concentration. The saturation point for H2 when dissolved into water is 1.57 milligrams per liter or ppm. This means that that is the highest concentration that you can possibly achieve under normal conditions. And in comparison, the saturation point of carbon dioxide is 1,481.97 milligrams per liter or ppm. So what's the point? You can produce a whole bunch of H2, but if you're not implementing anything to help it dissolve into the water, it's just gonna float it up out of there. And more importantly, the hydrogen won't be able to get into your body and do the things you want it to do. Not incorporating built-in dissolver technologies for H2 leads to a ton of wasted H2 and lower H2 readings. Ionizers rely on water turbulence and water flow rate to dissolve the H2, which is really not an effective method. Quote, as the H2 gas bubbles are produced, the turbulent flow of the water across the cathode helps to dissolve them into the drinking water. And it is far less efficient than other methods that are now being incorporated into hydrogen water products, such as using pressure or PSI, high RPM vortex, micro and nano dissolvers, etc. For this reason, many water ionizers produce a very low dissolved hydrogen concentration. Check out this quote. However, many machines only produce about a 6% saturation level, 0.1 milligrams per liter, at a pH of 9.5. Number four, water cell details. We explained how electrolysis works in our last video. Again, I cannot stress enough for you to watch that video if you haven't already. The water cell is important because it is what produces the hydrogen. The design of the water cell and its electrodes will highly influence the hydrogen gas production, as well as how efficient the cell will dissolve hydrogen gas. For example, water ionizers that have mesh plates in their water cell is going to have better hydrogen gas performance. This is because the mesh plates provide a direct path for the electrical current to travel. Also, they generally have more surface area for hydrogen gas to form, whereas water ionizers with solid smooth plates will have less efficient hydrogen gas performance. This is because the current does not have a direct path to travel and they generally have less surface area. What also matters is the surface or texture of the electrode. When an electrode is rough, kind of like sandpaper, it has more grooves for hydrogen gas to form as well. Now this matters only if the system requires running water over the plate, which is how 
how water ionizers work. It matters because when water is running over the plates, it picks up hydrogen gas that is produced. So you want to make sure a system's water cell is producing the maximum amount of hydrogen possible. But it is also producing hydroxide, which results in a higher pH. And that calcium problem also occurs when running the water over the plates. Ultimately, all these little details is an unnecessary problem to have. There are new technologies that eliminate these limitations. Technologies that produce hydrogen gas separately from the water and then dissolve it into the drinking water. With this technology, the drinking water never touches the water cell electrodes. Here's a quote. Recently, a new type of hydrogen water device has emerged on the market, the hydrogen infusion machine. This type of device does not have the same type of chamber as a conventional electrolyzer and instead produces H2 gas in a small hydrogen gas chamber using a proton exchange membrane containing solid polymer electrolyte, PEM slash SPE. Then rather than depending only on turbulent flow to dissolve the gas into the water, mixes the H2 gas into drinking water stream using a special dissolver chamber. Because this class of device utilizes specialized electrically conductive membranes tightly sandwiched between the anode and cathode, the source water need not contain any level of minerals, TDS, and in fact can produce H2 water even with distilled or RO water sources. Number five, more power equals bigger bubbles. Conventional ionizers generally require more electrical power to their cells to overcome the higher electrolytic cell resistance seen with these systems. This can result in producing hydrogen gas too quickly, forming bigger hydrogen bubbles. These gas bubbles won't dissolve into the water as well, and will exit the water quickly. This ultimately means less dissolved hydrogen gas that can benefit the body, and more hydrogen gas wasted. This is shown to be evident by a popular trick done with water ionizers. You may have seen a demo of lighting a lighter by the water stream of an ionizer. And when water comes in contact with the fire, there is crackles and pops from the fire combusting with hydrogen gas. This is evidence of hydrogen gas being produced for sure. But unfortunately, it is showing you that all that hydrogen gas is escaping the water through the hose and therefore able to react with the fire. Remember, hydrogen gas that is dissolved into water is not flammable and will not have that effect. The only realistic way to make sure an ionizer is producing dissolved hydrogen gas is by testing it with the reagent called H2 blue. We've done two videos about that as well. Number six, high H2 equals high pH. Another unfortunate limitation with water ionizers is that even when there is a higher H2 concentration achieved, it often comes at the expense of a high pH. Some have found that running the water slower can increase the hydrogen concentration but this usually increases the pH of the water above 10. Water above a 10 pH is not acceptable for human consumption, and it can cause the water to be not too pleasing to the taste buds. Quote, by running the water very slowly, these machines may increase the molecular hydrogen concentration but the resulting pH is very high, making the water unpalatable. This poses a significant challenge for these systems to be able to produce a high concentration of H2 while keeping the pH of the water below 10. Check this quote out. It has become important to produce alkali ion water with a high concentration of dissolved hydrogen, maintaining a pH value below 9.8. With conventional electrolysis, it is difficult to prepare alkali ion water containing dissolved hydrogen at almost saturation concentrations, 1.57 milligrams per liter at SATP, without a rise of the pH over 10. Also, drinking water above a 10 pH may have some deleterious effects. This study stated this about drinking water above a 10 pH. I reported on the basis of clinical test results that alkali ion water at a pH above 10 could cause an increase of potassium ion in blood in rare cases. And a couple more quotes. Exposure to extreme pH values results in irritation to the eyes, skin, and mucous membranes. 
Eye irritation and exacerbation of skin disorders have been associated with pH values greater than 11. In addition, solutions of 10 pH to 12.5 pH have been reported to cause hair fibers to swell. In sensitive individuals, gastrointestinal irritation may also occur. However, high alkalinity water may have some unknown systemic effects leading to growth retardation, the cause of which remains to be determined. So if there's a chance you may receive an adequate dose of H2 with the water ionizer, it may come at a price. Now, I know you may be thinking, but my ionizer has a button that tells you what the pH is and it's below 10, so I'm good. Well, not necessarily. Those buttons actually denote an applied voltage or electrical current setting or level. It does not regulate the final pH of the drinking water. It's important to measure the H2 and the pH of the water and not rely on the pH setting of the system. If the source water is not 7 pH exactly, then it's likely that the pH of your drinking water will not match the pH of the water ionizer setting. Number seven, highest dose equals lowest dose. Based on the studies, there is a consensus that suggests one to three milligram per day of H2 is what appears to be therapeutic for humans. However, preclinical and clinical human studies are administering one to 15 milligrams per day of H2 via water, and they have seen statistical improvements in various disease models. Many disease models appear to be dose dependent, meaning that there is a minimum dose needed to induce a therapeutic effect. And the higher the dose, the greater the effect. So what kind of dose can you expect from a water ionizer? Considering that most water ionizers on the market produce anywhere from 0.1 to 1 milligram per liter or ppm of H2, 0.7 milligrams per liter or ppm is a good benchmark to work with. With a dissolved hydrogen concentration of 0.7 milligrams per liter, you will need to consume 2.85 liters or 96.3 ounces of H2 water per day to ingest 2 milligrams of hydrogen per day. That is a lot of water. It will require most people all day to consume that much water, and that's just for the lower dose of H2 seen in the studies. To add, this would be a lower dose of H2 over a longer duration of time, which is being demonstrated to be less effective than a higher dose of H2 over a shorter duration of time. So in general, even a high concentration for an ionizer would be a relatively low dose considering the studies. Number eight not universal. Water ionizers have been proven to be consistent and reliable in terms of operation and functionality. However, in terms of dissolved hydrogen levels, these systems are notorious for being inconsistent and unreliable for the things we've mentioned already, making them not a universal hydrogen water system. By universal, I mean that you can't just assume that you can hook up a water ionizer and know that you will receive adequate levels of H2. There are three reasons why water ionizers are not universal. Number one, everyone's source water conditions are different. Number two, the hydrogen gas production and performance is dependent on so many factors. Number three, these systems are very expensive. This means that some will have no problem with their water ionizers producing therapeutic levels of dissolved hydrogen, but some will struggle to produce anything close to a therapeutic concentration. This will require a significant amount of troubleshooting and likely increase the maintenance and cost of the system. Speaking of cost, most most people don't have three to six thousand dollars to spend on a hydrogen water system and if they do they should be able to spend that money on something they know they can trust and that will give them the desired results the information we shared in this video is not known by most people but it should be known and readily available so consumers can accurately weigh the pros and cons this raises a personal ethical issue for us and one I want to extend to other proponents of water ionizers. How can we emphasize the benefits of hydrogen while asking people to spend so much money on devices that are not optimally designed for it? Now, at one point they were all we had, but we can't make those excuses anymore. Here is one last quote. In all circumstances, the concentration of hydrogen gas drastically depends on source water and flow rate. And of course, the design and amount of scaling on the electrodes. Two more things and then I'm done. One, if you already have an ionizer, don't fret. Our next video will be about making the most out of your water ionizer. We will teach you how you can make sure you are producing as much dissolved hydrogen gas with your water ionizer as you can. Number two, you may be thinking, but what about all the other waters that water ionizers make? We are gonna do a video about that as well 
soon. There are some misconceptions about the other waters that water ionizers make, and I can't wait to tell you about it. Be sure to share this video around. Thanks again to our patrons for making this video possible. Check out the description if you want to become a patron and support our mission. Also, if you're not interested in supporting us regularly through Patreon, you can also do a one-time donation, and that link will also be in the description. And that was your problem-solving dose of H2 in minutes.